Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Taylor and I hand make scrunchies and bows. I've been doing so for eight years. Today, it's the most requested video on my channel. Every, every video I post, every video there is comments from everywhere that ask this. Either what are your scrunchie measurements or how do you make your scrunchie? So today I'm going to show you a tutorial on how to make deluxe scrunchies in a regular size and a large size like an XL size. I won't be using my signature white elastic because most people don't use white elastic so I'll be using just a normal thinner elastic for this tutorial which will also make it look even more plush because the white elastic which is literally that's how white it is not white elastic it makes it look even more like big and plush and gorgeous looking. I haven't got it released yet but I am working on scrunchie packs that you can purchase and make them yourself. That will include stuff like the thread, a safety pin and materials of course so you can make your own scrunchies and have everything you need. But I haven't got those released yet but they will be available in the link in bio once they are. So I will be doing the XL first and then followed by the regular scrunchie. So don't run off because I will show what fabrics I recommend, what fabrics I don't recommend for scrunchie making. So it's really bright, which is why I didn't really want to film this part, but I'll film it anyway. Line it up like this. A bit over six and a half inches that I use for my White Elastic XL scrunchies. So anywhere between six inches and six and a half, almost seven inches, I would recommend for the XLs. So that's the piece. And as you can see, it is very long. So it's doubled over. And I, that's all I cut. So I just cut the width of fabric for the XLs. For the normal size, I do four and a half inches. The normal size, I cut that in half. So I'm gonna use scissors for this. So whatever the fabric is, I do half of the width of fabric. So the width of fabric is from the salvage to salvage. So where like the little dots are, usually it has maybe writing on it or maybe it has colors. Yeah, so that to that is what width of fabric is. I'm just using my Juki industrial machine. You can use any sort of sewing machine for this though. The only important parts are you want to change your mills. So what I usually do is three, maybe three and a half. But for the industrial, because it goes so quick anyway, I just use three to do all the sewing. You could also really do two if you really wanted. So we're going to do the XL first. Work out which side's the pretty side, which side's the not pretty side, like the inside of it. You want to flip it. So the two ends meet together and the pretty sides on the inside. So you end up all like this. You just want to line those up. I don't bother cutting off the salvage part because it will be hidden in the scrunchie anyway and it's just an extra time saving thing. So what you want to do is backstitch the front and backstitch this end as well. So I've got a backstitch there and a backstitch there. That just helps it not come apart for the next step. Next part, we're just moving this to the middle. It's still the inside's the pretty side, the shiny side, and this side is the outside part. And once that's flat like that, and it's pretty much made a circle with your fabric, what you want to do is, see how there's, that's the bottom and that's the top? You want to fold this about halfway into the middle. Then you want to fold the other side halfway into the middle, like that. And if I lift this gently, see how it's not connected at all to that bottom part. And now, that does get a little bit confusing, but what you're going to do, you're going to take this part and put it over here. So you're pretty much folding it in half. And you're folding this part too. Fold. All the way to the other side. Like that. So once you're happy with how it's sitting, you're going to put that back underneath your foot. And you want to do another back stitch. And then you want to just sew. You want to leave at least five millimeters, maybe a little bit more, um, on the side, especially for satin fabrics if they're ones that fray a lot. Now, once you're coming closer to the end, you want to make sure that you're not getting at the inside parts. So there's this inside here. You want to make sure you're not sewing over that. So make sure when you're sewing that you've sort of got, you know, you, you can sort of feel it in here. You don't want it getting close to that edge. But once you do the first sort of line, you're pretty much good to go. Now what you do is, see like there's like a loop here. You want to just pull that out. 
and with your other hand you're holding back here but you don't want to hold the whole thing because then you won't be able to pull anything it will get stuck you want to just hold the top layer you just want to pull that pull it right out like that and again you want to make sure that this middle part here isn't sitting like that because you will sew right over it and it won't work your scrunchie will won't work at all so you have to unpin it so yeah i just usually try and like shove it right in to the to this side because we're sewing on over the here now when it comes to here you can either sew straight across it or if it's a thick fabric you might need to split it like that like move it apart and split it all the way around but i just sew over it because the industrial allows that it doesn't really do anything and again i'm just pulling out that fabric so then i can start sewing again all right so we're coming near to the end there is a pocket here and there's heaps of excess fabric what you want to do is you want to put that back in you want to shove that back in there so now we've got a straight line to the other to the first stitch where we first did the back stitch you want to leave about an inch before you do the back stitch so it looks like that now with certain fabrics you might end up with a little gap like this see how it's like that usually what i do when sewing satins i will pull this one tighter the bottom part and that usually gets rid of that while i'm sewing from like probably back up here i'll pull it tighter um for velvets it's a bit harder because especially ones that don't stretch the velvets that don't stretch yeah that just sometimes happens but as you start making more of these you'll figure out techniques on how to stop that now i just use my finger i put my finger in and i feel around so there's you'll be able to feel it i think really easily and see how that's like the prettiest stuff it's really shiny what you want to do is you want to grab that you can use tweezers for this but i wouldn't i don't need it to do it so yeah i just pull it out once it's like that like it takes two seconds to just pull the whole thing out you want to be careful there's like a the lump where all of the parts come together it might be a bit harder to pull out but usually it's fine okay so that's our scrunchie tube elastic is super important for scrunchies and like it might take you a little while to find what elastic works best for you and your business but this is the elastic i use it's a non-roll ribbed elastic this is the thinner version of my non-roll ribbed elastic though so it's about 12 millimeters which is still quite a thick elastic for people um that aren't used to it a lot of people only use six mils okay and this is a bobkin so to thread a scrunchie tube you can use a whole range of things like chopsticks uh safety pins really anything <laughs> but i use a bobkin uh it's it's called a clover bobkin you can get it on amazon and really anywhere if you type it into google and it pretty much just works that it cl like clips onto here and it holds it tight so what you want to do is thread the scrunchie yeah it is much quicker to do it with a bobkin in my opinion um than safety pins and any other items that you may come across Oh, and you want to make sure you're holding this might take a little bit to get used to to hold the end of the elastic if you feel that you keep losing it you can always pin the elastic to the fabric or put something on the end that's really big like a clip like a big clip so it won't go through that hole and you want to make sure you don't twist the elastic especially if you're using like wider elastic like this one doesn't really matter i guess if you're using three or six mil okay so that's done now this step will depend on what sort of elastic you're using if you're using a thinner elastic all, all you have to do is grab the two ends tie it like a balloon knot this elastic you cannot do that what i do is i glue it first you can also safety pin it if you prefer i glue mine because it's just easier to hold it in place i just leave it for a couple seconds to dry before i sew it all right so once you're ready to sew the elastic i've just put it underneath to sew forward and then the back and then forward again 
So with this machine, I probably do probably six, so three back and four. I'd do more than two though. You, I've just like shoved the elastic back in. But now you have an opening. So I usually put my label in this opening. You don't have to put it in this opening. You can put it in on the first step here where the join is. I just prefer it on this edge here. This is where people have different opinions, I guess. I use a one millimeter stitch and don't back stitch. That's just my preference. If you want to keep the three millimeter, that's fine. Just make sure you back stitch, otherwise it will come apart. Put that gently in there. So you want to go pretty close to the edge. Um, honestly, I don't use different color threads. I only use black and white because I feel like you can barely see it anyway with the one millimeter stitches. So this is a one millimeter stitch. That is what it looks like. Super small. There's no way you can break it. If if I mess up and like I miss the other side, like it takes me so long just to get that stitch out. Yeah, that's what I do. But you can, if you prefer, do the back stitch and do a thicker thicker mill if you want all right so almost done all you got to do now is maybe go look for some loose threads so sometimes with the xls there's some sitting around the sides and of course this part here just use like little embroidery scissors that i got like years and years ago and now we have to fluff it out so to fluff it out i usually just grab all the sides and like where like the seam is and pull it around and then I scrunch it out. And that's how it turned out. So it's super big, super luscious. It's massive. Okay, to make the regular size, it is exactly the same as this. It's just different measurements. So I'm going to just film this, uh, but not talk. going to leave this on the three millimeter and do a back stitch just so you guys can see what the difference looks like as you can see that's what that looks like okay i hate it honestly like some people like that that's up to them that is the difference between a one millimeter and a three millimeter stitch so it just looks so much messier. I don't know. It's up to you. Maybe if it was the same color, it wouldn't look so bad. But like with white and one millimeter stitching, it look you can't even see it. So yeah, that's why I do that. That's yeah, just my opinion. Scrunch this one out. So that's what that one looks like. And that is how I make scrunchies. This is my XL. That's literally how I make the XLs. Uh, it's I make the, these ones different. Okay, so that's done. So that's the regular size and that is the XL size, so they're quite big, as big as my face. I'll just grab my like actual ones. So this is how I do them usually, so I don't do them in burrito. That's what they look like, so there's actually a big difference in what they look like when you use a smaller elastic. Like this one looks heaps bigger, but it's exactly the same, it's just different elastic because it's like more risen. So now that I've shown you how to make scrunchies and some beautiful ones that you'd be able to sell yourself and be very proud of, I'm going to show you what fabrics I would recommend and ones I do not recommend. Okay, so a lot of the fabrics I'm about to mention are from Spotlight. I don't know what their actual names are, so it doesn't really help. Uh, Spotlight, I'm pretty sure it's only in Australia as well. I don't know. 
most of like US and UK so there's no spotlight over there <laughs> but I love deluxe satin now you can definitely get deluxe satin elsewhere but you might have a little bit of trouble finding the exact type but it, it is pretty much satin that doesn't fray like some other satins I've had some satins I've had literally fray after you cut it it will just fall apart and those I wouldn't recommend that's actually why I stayed away from satin for so long uh, I didn't actually sell satin in my store for, for years because I had used that sort of satin before and I was like I'm not using that like it breaks apart like you'd end up with holes in your scrunchies and stuff unless you did like triple stitches everywhere this satin beautiful barely frays like barely frays and highly recommend it I'll try and bring it close to the camera so you can sort of see the weave okay so the weave is really small I don't recommend penne velvet or velvet that's very flimsy flimsy velvet makes not very nice scrunchies it's really hard to sew and they just don't turn out very nice I will get some velvet options to show you and before I forget to mention the width of fabric is relevant for most of the scrunchies that I make but there is certain scrunchies in the XL range that I don't use the width of fabric and that's mostly velvets or really chunky knits because they come out way too thick if I use the whole width of fabric. So yeah, it does take a little bit of trial and error to figure out what you like for your own scrunchies. But that's just what I use for mine. These scrunchies, these are three different types of velvets, all from Spotlight. This one, it's super slippery. It just doesn't look right as a scrunchie and it doesn't feel right and it just it moves everywhere it would be so annoying in the hair so I only made one of those this one is like a thick uh, cord like it's like corded almost but it's not corded it's like a velvet one they turn out really nice they're nice and thick I'll grab the other one so this is one with a full width of fabric it's just too much like this is what like that's more than enough fabric on there this is too much um, it's too chunky it's actually really heavy in the hair so that is why I cut some off. This, really good. It's It stays in place. It doesn't flop around. It's easy to sew. This is Galena. Galena fabric is a furnishing fabric. You can definitely get it from elsewhere. I have no idea where though. I know other scrunchie makers use this fabric because I can tell by just the texture of their scrunchies. So that's what it looks like close up. And like it's soft, but it's not too thick for a finishing fabric at least. And it makes like such a cute scrunchie. Some fabrics you'll find like wear easily. These obviously won't because they're furnishing. They will still look just as good in like a year. Uh, same with satin. I've had scrunchies for over a year using this satin and they're still perfect. They're just dirty. <laughs> I do wash them but yeah they're still like yucky looking. The scrunchie, the first ever XL scrunchie I made which would have been almost a year ago. Maybe like 8 months ago, 9 months ago. That one is still going strong. It still looks amazing. Um, it still feels amazing and it still looks just as plush. But not all fabrics are going to be like that, such as rayon. But I'll get to the ones I don't like later. <laughs> okay, other materials I like are cotton. Like cotton blends, they keep their shape and they're really easy to work with. They don't slip and slide and yeah, they don't stretch everywhere. So they're good. Some knits, it depends on the knit. Some knits are really easy to work with. Like some flannels as well, those sort of materials. But some, not so much. So there's super thick knits some of them work some of them don't it's it really just up to personal preference and whether you like the look of them and how thick they are uh there is one in particular that i really hate where is it so this was one of the most expensive fabrics i've purchased and it's terrible like it frays so easily and it's really hard to thread elastic through because it will just make holes yeah, so this will be one of the materials I'll be clearancing out at the end of, or start of April. Corduroy makes really nice scrunchies and that they stay, they don't, yeah, flop. Yeah, for scrunchie fabrics I don't really like, rayon. Rayon and really bad satin is probably like the only two which I stay away from. Also ones like actual flannelette. So there's a few aisles in Spotlight that I don't even go down because I just don't bother like chunk, real chunky mink. I do use some minky fabrics, but it has to be a certain type of minky. Um, like polar fleece, depends on what you're working with and like what you want to work with. I don't particularly like using them. Rayons though, for example, they crush down so easily. It's just, it's such a lighter material 
and it just has no body to it. I just need to go find one that has a rayon in it. So I've stopped putting rayon in these little baskets because they crush down so much that they're almost unrecognizable. But I may have already used them all for clearance scrunchies. Okay, so this is my old style, but it's flat. They like crease down, especially when once you start wearing them, they don't look as nice either. Okay, I'll just get one that's a full one. Like this one's already starting to fall, like crush down as well, but it's still, I don't know. So I would not recommend rayon for XL scrunchies at all. I still use them for this size because I have a wide elastic anyway. So it's, like if you use it for with really thin elastic, it gets even worse. But because I have a wide elastic, it doesn't... It doesn't look that bad uh, with this sort of thing. But yeah, I would not recommend it for XLs at all. Uh, materials I would like recommend completely for XLs. Satins, velvets, uh, I have a few knits, uh, cord, sateen. Sateen is great. I love sateen scrunchies. They are perfect. Chiffons aren't very good. I don't, don't really like the chiffons in the XLs because they're too flimsy and they don't look like this. They like scrunch up and go... <laughs> so I don't recommend those. Okay, so that's pretty much all I have to say about the fabrics, um, what I use, what I recommend. The names of the fabrics, they're just the names that Spotlight uses, so I'm not... I don't know if that's the exact same names that would be used universally. There's a lot of different fabrics that I haven't named, but I actually still use. Uh, these are just the ones that I have a lot of, and the ones that are most common, I think. Well, I hope you enjoyed making scrunchies. Hopefully it was what you guys wanted. Definitely check out my store once I get the packs up. So you'll be able to purchase some packs without having to go search for different sorts of fabrics. That definitely will include this sort of fabric, Deluxe Satin. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a lovely day. Bye!